This is a trailer for the game Lord of the Rings Fate of the Fellowship that I did for my friends over at Z-Man Games. And also, here's the storyboard for it. Now, I want to share with you some of the behind the scenes of this video and show you why I used Unreal Engine. So, let's go into Unreal and talk about some nerdy stuff. Before I do get into it, huge shout out to my friends over at Z-Man Games and the people over at Middle Earth who made this game. All They own all that stuff. They just brought me on to make the trailer for the board game to launch their stuff. In addition to that, I did do, do some 3D renders for their game components. But if I leave my cinematic camera, we can see here that it's actually just a little board with some chairs. Or actually, it's a big table, big stone table sort of thing. And if we fly out, it kind of just goes off into the horizon of some big, awesome, volcanic landscape sort of thing. Kind of like those Middle Earth kind of vibes. So, let's go ahead and take a look at what it's actually doing inside Unreal. So, I'm going to go ahead and look at my level sequence. Now, we're not going to do a full tutorial on how to make a trailer like this, but the first thing that I always do whenever I make my trailers is I start with music. And once that's done, I just bring that into Unreal as an audio track, and then I kind of go from there. Now, the most important things with working in trailers is you want to make sure you get your timings and cuts. So making a storyboard like the one I'm showing here is going to be really useful whether you're using some generative tools or just sketching like we did because you need to nail timing. But once you have that, you can do some really cool stuff with Unreal. So I'm going to go ahead and just mute my music for just a second. And if I just hit the play button, we can just see the trailer played as is. And it's rendering in real time. Now the difference between what we see in the viewport here and what we would see in the actual render is when you render something out of Unreal, it's going to give you those, like, it's going to tidy up some of those little imperfections that you see uh, in the viewport. So that being said, what Unreal Engine is really awesome for that I have found is that you can get amazing, almost close to pixel perfect final render quality. A lot of am amazing in-engine real-time feedback that you can't get in any other 3D software. Now, there are some downsides to working with Unreal, and I'm going to show you some of those things now. So the first thing beyond like the viewport not looking exactly perfect relative to the final render, there are some things that uh, make it a little bit more challenging to consider. So first off, you can't model in Unreal Engine. So when I mean uh, you have to do a lot of prep work to get into Unreal, you need to basically make all of these assets or all of the assets that you need to make for your trailer from scratch. So every single board game piece was something that myself or I did have some other collaborators on this project help me model so we can create some of these things. For example, some of the big dice, awesome uh, miniatures that we have over here, as cool as they are, I did not model those. They had some really awesome people who were able to sculpt these really awesome dragon pieces, and my role in this was basically taking it so we could actually import it into Unreal Engine. But once you have all the model stuff prepped outside of Unreal, you can do a lot of amazing things with Unreal. Now what you'll notice down here in my level sequence is that I have a single camera cut, and when we click on this button right here, we can look through our cameras, but we actually have no cameras inside this level sequence. And the reason why I found Unreal to be super valuable is you can see all of your animation, all of the work, all the art that you do in context. And what I mean by that is I can see my shots next to each other almost like in a video editing timeline. If you're using any other 3D software where you're doing a lot of different complex camera animation and character stuff, you'd have to have separate shots and separate project files for that. But with Unreal, we instead of having separate project files, we can have something called subsequences. So subsequences are these basically subsequences where you can have specific animations happening within this subsequence that doesn't affect the rest of the world. So for example, if I go ahead 
and just leave my level sequence, all this stuff kind of just lives in the space. But if I go back to my folder of my level sequence and I go into like, let's say this shot two and I scrub through without looking through the camera, we can see that as we go through each of these different cuts, different animations are triggering. And it's all done very simply because what's happening is whenever you're inside a level sequence, you're choosing what objects will spawn and what, what objects are disappearing. Now, if you were to work in any other 3D package like Blender or Cinema 4D or Maya, you basically have separate projects for this. But Unreal is magic. If you've ever played a video game before, they're spawning bad guys and weapons and stuff left and right. So Unreal is great for just turning stuff on and on in your sequence without having to have separate project files. So let's go ahead and play this back really quick and if I go ahead and leave my camera we can see that spawning in action so right now I'm looking through this main sequence but we can see here that uh, there's nothing moving right now as I play this but if I hit the G key G cool there we go we can see all my cameras and we can oh, come on is Oh, it's, I guess it's not going to play my cameras. Well, we have this this thing that's moving, so we're going to go ahead and just preview that. But if I hit the G key again and preview all of this animation, we can see here that all the little stuff that we animated throughout the trailer kind of just pops in as, as the animation goes. So... I like Unreal because I don't have to think about having multiple project files. It's just one big master project file. Now, the last thing I want to show you today is this dice animation that we did. So when we created this dice animation, one of the biggest problems about working with Unreal is it doesn't have very intuitive, uh, I guess simulation tools without having to get super crazy with blueprints and technical stuff so there is one gotcha I, I should mention and i do use other 3d software and i think if you do get into unreal it is worth knowing a little bit of cinema 4d or blender or whatever else and with that we created this dice animation in cinema 4d if i go into this uh, level sequence right here we can see here that we have this cool little orbit kind of michael bay style like circle around the tower and then it cuts to the dice animating now getting this to set, be set up fully in unreal was going to be a nightmare especially with all of the modeling so for example what we did do to actually get this to work well in unreal is we did the dice animation in cinema 4d we created the entire shot and then from there we used the plugin called the cineware plugin from maxon and cinema 4d to create this shot now the way this works is once you're doing your storyboards and you're trying to create your timing, the most important things is to get your frame numbers. So you'll see here in the lower corner down here on my timeline from frame 480 to frame 752, I know that this is where this shot is going to be. And then you can go ahead and use the, the plugins and imports and stuff to get it into Unreal. And then when you look at this actual dice animation, we can see that it's the 480 to 776. But we have this cool looking dice animation directly in Unreal because Unreal does talk nicely to other 3D software. So this was a little bit different of a video, but I wanted to show you a practical use case of why I use Unreal, even though I do use pretty much every other 3D software from Cinema 4D to Blender to ZBrush to Substance Painter. I use all these things, but Unreal is my go-to for all this stuff. And I like it because it just it's just the way my brain works. So I share this not because I want you to get into Unreal, but I want you to think about like what 3D software is going to help you think about making art in the in the best way for you. It may not be Unreal, it may be Blender or ZBrush or whatever else. But the way the reason why I like Unreal is it allows me to see all of my shots in context relative to each other and also work well with people because they can see pretty close what the final render is going to look like directly in the viewport because real time feedback back is awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something from this, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. And as always, with the final tip, one gram of protein per pound of body weight, you make some gains, like Gimli or something. Take care, my friends. Bye.